Hello YouTube, my name is Don Brandt and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be building this brass gyroscope. You may notice this is one of my brass castings. Okay, here's the gyroscope part. There's the flywheel or gyroscope. This is the ring. It's going to be the outside first ring and here is the shaft. So the first thing I need to do is cut the inside of this out. So I'll start working on that. So let's head on over to the lathe, and the first step will be to change the jaws out. And now it's time to grab that brass ring, pun intended. I recall having a gyroscope like this as a kid. It was pretty amazing then, and I still think they're pretty amazing now. Okay, now that I got my piece chucked up, let's go ahead and turn it around the other way. I have about 20 or 30 of these rings. These were a scrap purchase from the eBay website. So now let's start cutting. I have to take most of the material away out of this ring. To do this, I'll be using this boring bar that uh, was an inheritance from Grandpa Hope. As you can see, uh, this boring bar has a carbide insert, insert. Now I'll go ahead and measure the internal dimensions and pretend like I actually know what I'm doing. So the thought here is to make the uh, inside cut larger than the diameter of the flywheel. The flywheel is less than 3 inches, it's about 2.87 inches. And uh, I'm just going to rough the size of this internal hole to be larger than the flywheel. This metal machine is totally different than I would say brass. Uh, I think the term they use for this is actually gun metal. If any of my viewers know the difference between the two and want to chime in, would love to hear it. Really enjoy the power feed on the Grizzly G4000 lathe. And when we're finished with the internal diameters, we're going to go ahead and clean up the outside and face and put a rounded edge on the outside of the ring. Let's do a test fit real quick. I want to go ahead and make a comment about Adobe Premiere Elements. Every day I'm using it, I'm getting better and better. It's still a huge challenge though, getting the audio right. I watched some videos on YouTube, some how-tos, kind of like my video, and uh, got some great tips, and it really helped me working through my audio issues. On one of my recent videos, of your commented that um, that they didn't know you could use router bits uh, as lathe cutters and I kind of mentioned that they're made out of high-speed steel and they work pretty good. I wouldn't expect to get a whole lot of cutting time on steel but on the softer metals like brass or aluminum it works pretty well. So we'll go ahead and finish the other side and the next few steps are <coughs> measuring across the diameter marking it and drilling some holes. The holes I'm going to be drilling are going to be an index bit number 29. Now I forgot to record this so you won't see it but um, I'm built I'm drilling this size hole for an 8 32nd tap. That'll be uh, number 8 32 threads per inch. And here I'm just doing a test fit of the shaft inside the flywheel. Now I'm just getting my parts together. This will include uh, 832 set screws and uh, 832 brass nuts. And I'll set the set screws to get the tension correct um, on the shaft. And then I'll use the nuts to tighten them so they can't work loose. For you eagle eye viewers here, there's two things you may notice. One is the dimple was already there. Yes, I had to record it again. And two, uh, my sound is delayed. I'm hoping my new camera will fix that problem. Okay, we're done threading the ring and now we're going over to the bandsaw and we're going to cut the shaft. And, and so the way I'm going to make this shaft work is it's just going to go to a point and I wish I would have showed the lathe setup a little bit better but I'm running uh, the lathe in reverse right now and cutting on the far side of the steel. Now we're just doing a quick fit of the shaft inside the ring and then we'll be uh, mounting the uh, flywheel on the shaft uh, coming up next. So with a little trial and error and some time, you finally get the bearings to fit 
properly in the outside ring, adjusting and tightening. When I was a kid and I had one of these, you would use a pull string to get the uh, gyroscope going. In this case, I'm going to use compressed air and just see how fast I can get this sucker going. And now we're ready for our demonstration. I had a lot of fun building this project. It's very nostalgic to me. I hope you all enjoyed it as well. On my first test run, I had the bearings a little loose and you'll hear some vibration. And then afterwards I tightened the bearings up. Also, I still need to balance the flywheel and I may do that in another video. In the meantime, please enjoy mine and your childhood. So now I want to ask you, if you enjoy my videos, please like, please subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.